So here is a quick tutorial covering the functionality of the Ringmaster unofficial ZBrush plugin. So if you navigate to your Z plugin tab up here, you'll have a Ringmaster tab you can open up, and the Ringmaster plugin will be located there. I'm just going to dock this over to the side here. Now the Ringmaster plugin was created because I was experimenting with some jewelry ideas, and I didn't want to use another application to generate a base mesh for my rings. So this plugin will allow you to create specific size ring bands inside a ZBrush without the need of an external application. So to start off, if you just come and click on the Ringmaster logo here, you'll get this little splash screen, and this will explain some of the different items that the Ringmaster plugin has. So we have the size, which will determine the inner value, and this can be set to a US whole standard size, or a millimeter value. We have the thickness, which is the thickness of the band, and then we have the width of the band. Now when you set these different values and then click the Create Ring Base Mesh button here, these values will generate a new base mesh ring for you that you can then use with the Z Modeler brush or DynaMesh to create jewelry. Now we have a few different other options we can also use as well. So we can set the number of sides of the band. We can set how many segments the width will have. We can turn on creasing, and we can also set polygroups. So this is a quick little information card on these different settings. So if you need to pull this up, just come over and click on the button here, and this will pull up like so. So by default, we have the US size set. As you can see, this is going to give you that US standard size in whole numbers from 3 to 13. And this will turn that value into the correct millimeter size. If you need to type in a precise millimeter size, you can just select millimeter here and then set your value as needed. Now I'm going to set this to say a size of 6, and then I'm going to change my thickness to say something like 2, and then change my width maybe to 5. And these are all in millimeter values. You don't have to use whole numbers, so you can type 2.3, and it will give that thickness as well. Now, after that, we have a few more options we can set. So if I come down to the More Options area here, here is the options for the sides. So right now, the ring band will have 64 sides, and it will have three width segments. You can also set alignment, so if you want it to be aligned in X, Y, or Z. And these are the buttons here to enable the creasing options or enable polygrouping by face normal. Now, if you have a certain set of options that you use all the time, you can store these as the default settings by simply coming here and clicking this button, and this will now save those settings as default. So if you restart ZBrush and open up the Ringmaster again, these settings are going to be back where they were when you stored them. So after you're happy with all these settings here, you simply come and click Create Ring Base Mesh. Now ZBrush is going to process all these settings, and you're going to end up with a ring in your screen here. You turn on polyframes here, you'll see that width setting has been generated, so it has three width segments. Now if I navigate down to the subtool palette here, you can see that this ring was created for us with the plugin, but we also have some other subtools that were generated automatically. So the ring itself is labeled with the values in millimeters that were typed in. So this ring at a size of six has a 16.51 millimeter inner area. It has a two millimeter wall thickness, and it has a five millimeter width for the band. Now above this subtool, we have a mandrel subtool. So this is set to the precise value as well. So this is a 16.51 millimeter mandrel, and it is 50 millimeters in length. So this mandrel is handy if you use DynaMesh on the ring here, and you happen to go into the inner space of the ring, you can use the DynaMesh Subtract option with this mandrel to remove that precise inner cavity back out. Now the top subtool here will hold the scale on the mesh, and this is a 1 inch cube, or 25.4 millimeters. And this cube is handy when using the 3D Print Exporter to set a specific size. So you can set this to this 25.4 millimeter cube and then export the models out. By default, the ring that is created with the Ringmaster plugin will export out the correct size in millimeters if you simply export as an OBJ. So I'm going to come to the tool palette here and just click Export, and then I'm just going to export this OBJ out. 
Now, after that is exported, I'm going to switch to NetFab here. I'm just going to import that in. So here we have the ring inside a NetFab. I'm going to select the measurement option here. I'm going to select radius. I'm going to select the inner circle here. And you'll see that that inner radius is 16.51 millimeters, which is the setting we set inside a ZBrush. You can select the edge to edge mode here and navigate to the side this edge and click this edge. So you'll see that area there is exactly five millimeters, which was the width that we set. And then we can finally set the thickness, which is coming in at two millimeters, which is the setting that we had set inside a ZBrush. So as you can see, using the Ringmaster plugin, you can come through and set the specific millimeter values, create that mesh, and then if you export this out as an OBJ, it's going to retain those values. Now these values will change slightly if you use DynaMesh on this model or if you turn on dynamic subdivision. But the model in its pure stage as it is created from the Ringmaster plugin will measure correctly inside of NetFab when using the millimeter scale. So after you have the model created, you can now come in and say use the ZModeler brush with all the different attributes to tailor your ring to your precise look or style that you're going for. You just come through and bevel some of these edges here. You can then use any of the other Z modeler options like changing polygroups and then Q meshing polygroups all to add different designs to the ring there. And then if you export this out, it will hold all the dimensions that were originally set and you can use it in 3D printing. So that is the brief rundown on the Ringmaster unofficial ZBrush plugin. Uh, you can find a link to the plugin itself in the comments of this video, and also where to post any issues that you may run into. So I hope that helps, and happy ZBrushing!